welcome to No Walls. As you can see, everybody's not abiding by the that these are being obedient. Welcome to No Walls. This is my first people, but never in video. The camp. So this is going to be a new experience. Um, again. Hi guys, welcome back to No Walls. I'm so excited to have each of you worshiping with us this Sunday. Happy Sunday. It goes out to all of our sailors and all of you serving in the military along with your families. Thank you so much for all that you're doing for the sacrifice. And happy Sunday goes out to all of the youth, the young adults, and to those of you of wisdom. Um, I am excited about what God has been doing. Um, and so today, um, as promised, we are going to do the message, The Huddle. Uh, it's an amazing message from God, and He had us to wait to do it um, so that we could... <laughs> So we could check our row again. So if you weren't in service last Sunday, if you hadn't gotten a chance to watch, I do encourage you to go watch last Sunday's message, um, which is check your row again. Today's message uh, it comes from Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 16 through 20. And it says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Again, that's Matthew, the uh, 28th chapter, verses 16 through 20. And today's message is called The Huddle. The huddle. Uh, this is a, uh, to those of you who don't like football, sorry, but <laughs> Jesus spoke in parables, and trust me, uh, you will learn a little bit, um, but you will learn more spiritually today um, from this very simplistic message from the Holy Spirit that just made me go, aha, you know, like, okay, you know, there's work that we should be out there doing. So let me just start with the basics. Um, so teams have a lot of players by the time you get to college and the NFL. Now, if you're in the rec league, there's probably exactly 11 kids <laughs> and all 11 have to play offense and defense. But by the time you get to college and football, there's quite a few players. There, there are in high school as well, but definitely by the time you get to college and the NFL, quite a few players. However, no matter how many people you have on your roster, you can only send 11 players into the game at a time. Um, there is a penalty for sending too many people in to play um, in any given uh, possession. Before they get to the field, uh, teams have met and they have been given what they call a playbook. The playbook um, is filled with different plays instructions. Um, it's different plays for different situations, uh, but it's all, every play is to get the team to win. Similarly, God has left us with a playbook, the Holy Bible. And that Bible, though it has many different plays and many different situations in which to teach us how to get uh, from one point to the next point, the commonality of every scripture, of everything, is to show us the unfailing love of God so that we can share the gospel of Jesus Christ and so that people can be saved to get us to heaven. That's the end goal. And so likewise in football, even though there are many different plays that you can run and many different players, um, it's still one goal. It's still one ending that we expect. And the blessing for us is that we already know the end. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. We win. Um, and so before they get out to the field, the football team has already gone over the plays. You have the quarterback who normally studies it night and day, night and day. Um, because you remember in scripture it says, you know, hide these things in your heart so that um, you won't sin against me. So you can bring them back. You can ask the Holy Spirit to bring them back to your memory. You can't have something, can't have something brought back to your memory if you never studied it or read or looked over it or understood it. And so that's why oftentimes you'll see the quarterback looking down at his arm with the text that's written on his arm. Um, the scriptures are to be written on our heart. Um, but for, for physical, for a football team, a real football team, the plays are called from a coach, from an offensive coordinator to a coach. Quarterback looks over at his quarterback coach or at the offensive coordinator or whoever's on the field calling those plays, and he looks down at the text on his arm. 
And the Holy Spirit is doing that for us and saying, listen, if you write these scriptures on the tablet of your heart, when the play is called, you will remember that scripture and you will know that God is still good and that all things are working together for your good. And you'll know and you'll remember to run from sin, to run from evil. So as I said, you have 11 players that can go on a field at a time. When they get into a real game, they get into what we call a huddle. Now, the huddle is probably, is probably one of the most important things a team can have in the game. Now, let me, before I tell you about the huddle, let me tell you, last Sunday I mentioned an audible. God last week called an audible telling me to change the play like We're not going to minister the huddle yet. And then we got to check our row again. But an audible is where we made a decision in the huddle. But now that I've come out and seen the defense, uh-oh, I need to announce a change and we don't have time to huddle. Sometimes you don't have time to, to pray, but you just say, in the name of Jesus, that's an audible. Help me, God. That's an audible. Remember when Peter stepped out into the water? He didn't have time to say, Dear Heavenly <laughs> Peter didn't have time to say, Dear Heavenly Father. He just called on the name of Jesus, like, Come save me. And it says, Immediately. You don't always have time to do a full, full feature length film prayer to God. Sometimes it's got to be quick. And so that's what quarterbacks have the option of. It's called an audible. But for the most part, they make their plans, they strategize, they organize in the huddle. The huddle is designed and important because, as I stated, they have a play, they have a book of plays. There's a whole, there's hundreds of options and plays that they could run, right? But when we get into this huddle, that's when we tell you what play we've decided to run. You can't run them all. If we don't have a huddle, everybody goes out there, <laughs> all, the, all 11 people go out there and run the play that they want to run, and then there, you have chaos on the field, so you have a huddle. The world calls them business meetings. They meet to meet. They meet to decide they're going to have donuts or bagels. They meet to decide if they're going in the right direction or the wrong direction. They meet to decide if you're going in the right direction or wrong direction. They meet to decide they're going to keep you or let you go. They just, they meet, they huddle together to do make a lot of decisions. They huddle to strategize a, a marketing campaign. So the world has huddles. And so likewise, spiritually, we have huddles. And that's called prayer for, for us. Some of our huddles are, are prayer only. Some of our huddles are like this church service where we come together with a body of believers and we call on God for a singular thing. Um, sometimes we have Bible study where we learn more about the word and that's our huddle where we strategize. Now, the strategy or the choice of the play that the quarterback normally runs is usually based on how the defense has lined up. How has the enemy lined up in your life? What is the enemy trying to do? How is the enemy trying to stop you? So they huddle together to decide the best way to get past the enemy, the best way to get beyond where the enemy wants you to go so that you can score, right? The enemy has, I'll just say three major. And, and so for all you football fans or fanatics or studiers of the game that are going, she don't even know. <laughs> Okay, maybe not, but I'm going to tell you the three that I know about. Uh, you first have an option of a zone defense. In a zone defense, that's where your defensive players cover a zone. It means I've been assigned, if I'm on defense, I've been assigned a specific area of the field to protect or to guard against or to stop you. And so the enemy sometimes get in. They uh, the enemy sometimes gets into a zone defense where he is trying to stop you in an area of your life. Everything else is going good, except this one thing, this one area of your life. And that's because the enemy is in a zone defense, and you gotta know how to fast and pray to get around that enemy's uh, tactics of stopping you. You've got to know when to seek godly counsel, right? Because they're in a zone defense, blocking your finances, blocking your relationships, blocking your home, blocking your job. They're trying to keep you from advancing in the name of Jesus Christ in some area of your life. Sometimes uh, the defense is an Amanda man defense. And that's where it is. I don't care 
what zone you run into. I've been assigned a specific player. So I, if I'm on defense, man-to-man -man means I got to go with this player no matter what he does. So if he runs off the field into the concession stand, <laughs> I got to run off the field into the concession stand because I'm playing man-to-man. -man. And sometimes the enemy just attacks you, your mind. Why am I in a depression? Why am I going through this? Why am I feeling self-pity? Why am I, you know, just crying? Like sometimes the enemy doesn't care what area of your life, or your life is going good or bad. The enemy just wants to stop you, you, your, your spiritual walk with Christ. Your, take over your thought life. And sometimes the enemy will blip. It's where they just go for the quarterback. They go, they go to try to try to tackle the person calling the plays in your life. Sometimes you got a quarterback that can't escape a blitz. You got the Holy Spirit, he can escape a blitz. <laughs> but the enemy tries to attack or will attack whoever you have in your huddle calling the plays. I encourage you today to allow surrender. Let the Holy Spirit into that huddle. Let the Holy Spirit be the quarterback. Let the Holy Spirit direct you in all things. And the crazy thing is, if, if you part of the O-line, the offensive line, and you're not doing your job, <laughs> you're just letting the defense come through. You're just allowing the enemy to come through. That's why last week it said, check your row again. You got to check who's in the huddle with you. Who's praying with you. Everybody that's praying, <laughs> everybody that's praying, they're not praying for you. They're praying to be heard. They're praying with eloquent speech just to be heard that they speak well to God. And he says, I don't want your eloquent speech. I want your heart. So, yeah, so while you're in this huddle, you're strategizing. You're trying to figure out how is it that we can get around this defense. The beautiful thing about a huddle is that it is important. This huddle is necessary. you got to have huddles, and you can't just have one huddle. If you have, <laughs> if you have just one huddle, you're going to lose the game because there's going to be chaos after every play. You may call in your huddle, um, in your first possession, you may not get anywhere. You may not go anywhere. But the game isn't over. And sometimes when we don't move forward, we quit. You can't quit. You got a whole nother quarter to go. You got four quarters in this life. You got, you got to stay in the game. You call a huddle, that play doesn't work, you regroup. You pray again. You go out there, something doesn't work, you get back on your knees and you pray again. And every time you go out there, you pray See, a huddle, even though it is important, I tell you this, no one complains about a huddle. None of the people watching go, oh, my gosh, why are they meeting again? Why are they strategizing again? No, your team wants you to huddle. They want you to strategize. They want you to figure out. You have angels in heaven excited when you pray, excited when you huddle together with the Holy Spirit. They love when your family comes together and pray. How many of you pray with your family? I don't pray with my family. Why? It's embarrassing. Why don't you pray with your family? Because they ain't know the real me. No. Come on. Bring the Holy Spirit and huddle together with your family. We should be having huddles. People don't complain about that. You should come back together. When you wake up in the morning, you and the Holy Spirit, you strategize. Pray to God. When you lay down at night, strategize. Thank you, God. I give you tomorrow. I surrender tomorrow. Help me to walk right. Order my steps tomorrow. You keep huddling with every possession. But here's the problem with the huddle. <laughs> Although the huddle is wanted, needed, and valuable, and extremely important, you can't stay there all day. You can't stay in a huddle the whole game. I'm not going to pay $150 for my ticket to see you in a huddle. There's actually a quote that says a ship is safest in the harbor, but that is not what it was built for. In football, in the game of football, they give you 30 seconds to, to go, <laughs> to run your play. So you get... so. You, you don't get it this way, but it's a good idea. To take the 15 seconds, hey, look, this is a play in your huddle. Everybody know what we're doing. Everybody on the same page? <laughs> we good? We good. Okay, let's go. And then you got 15 seconds for everybody to get in position, for you to check your defense, 
Check your offense, make sure everybody's ready, and then you gotta snap the ball. If you don't snap the ball, Within those 30 seconds you were given, it's called a delay of game. It's a delay. Where's my blessing that God promised me? You're still in the huddle. You ain't moved. <laughs> That's where your promise is, right? So you get a delay of game. And the problem with the delay of game is in football, it's called a penalty. And a penalty, you know what they do? They move you back. You don't go forward. You move backwards five yards. Now you have to reset. <laughs> what are we doing now? Now you have to change the play. Now you have to change your strategy because you stayed in the huddle. What, do, what does that mean? I pray, but then what did you do? And then I've, I've been praying. If you don't get up, <laughs> I hear people all the time saying, I keep praying to God and he not answering. You're not supposed to stay in the huddle. That's why this scripture says, go into all the nations. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Sometimes you get a delay of gain because you took too long in the huddle, right? Sometimes you get the penalty of false start because everybody wasn't on one accord. How do you get on one accord? How do you make sure that they don't go on the wrong snap count? The Bible tells us that without love, what we do is nothing. And some of us are like, look, I prayed. And then I went into the nations. And so I did all this other stuff. And God's like, listen, yeah, but that's a false start. It didn't really start. Because without love, it's nothing. I prophesied. He said, that, that's great. It's good. When you prophesy, yes, you help edify the church. And, and when you speak in tongues, by all means, yes, that's a gift from God. Do that. That's a, that's a gift. But if there's not an interpreter, you talking, you speaking in tongues does nothing for the edifying of the church because people don't know what you're talking about. If I were to be talking in German right now, most of you would have stopped watching a long time ago because you don't have a clue what I'm saying. Then why give to the poor? I went and fed the hungry. I gave tithes. I mean, y'all told me to give my first 10%. I gave 10 Yeah, he's like, but listen, that's great. You're doing it. I was commissioning. I went and told them about Jesus. I told them that Jesus was real and Jesus was good, and I invited them to church. They didn't come. I told them to come. I hear that all the time. I invited them to church. They didn't come. He says, listen, did you do it with love? And there's no credit to us. We don't win. We don't get anything. We don't get anything when we love those who love us. He says, listen, the disciples asked Jesus. He, they said, listen, what's the greatest commandment? He says, listen, that you love the Lord your God with all of your heart, right? Um, so first you love God, and he goes, listen, the second one is really close to it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. You take good care of yourself. You feed yourself. <laughs> you give yourself a roof over your head. You clothe yourself. Like You love yourself so much, you make sure yourself has the best. And he's saying, that's how I want you to love your neighbor. Who is my neighbor? Everybody that's not yourself. <laughs> Everybody. But they use me. That's who you're supposed to love. They hate me. You love them anyway. They just, they just take advantage of me. You're supposed to love them. You're supposed to. And he says it. He says, look, there's no credit to you if you love people who love you. While we were yet sinning, he died for us. He loved us when we didn't love him. He, he loved us when we weren't doing right. He loved us when we were sinning. He loved us when we had all these false starts. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to fast today. And on good and well, day one, we'd be like, yeah, you know what? But I haven't really committed to it. So let me go ahead. <laughs> let me go ahead and eat today. False start. And a false start does the same thing that a delay of game does. You go backwards. And some of us almost in the in, <laughs> some of us almost in the in the wrong end zone because we keep getting pushed back. Why? Follow the plan. Get out of the huddle and go. While nobody minds watching the huddles because they're necessary, that's not what we came to the game to see. See, we didn't come to the game to see the huddle. We came to see you run the play. When Jesus came to this earth, he took on the form of man to save you, right? And then he says, now go. 
And when we get to Matthew 28, he's already risen. He did his part. He's already risen. And he says, listen, now go into all. There's no corner of this earth that should be left untouched. We got to go tell everybody about Jesus Christ and make disciples. Help them share the gospel. Teach them how to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what happens in a huddle. Listen, this author, uh, this writer for, I'm not sure if it's a newspaper or not, but her name is Jane. And she had this beautiful um, article that she wrote as it related to Hamlin, the NFL player who, um, that's how you know that there's actually a God because, and I, to all the medical professionals, I apologize, I know I'm going to get this so wrong, but our heart rhythm, it beats a certain way. Um, and even though for us, our heart, beat may, our heart may beat like this, that snap, right, has these little bitty things within that snap, within that second. Um, and so it, in that one millisecond, when our, when our heart hits like the T, whatever that is, or whatever letter that is, I know I'm getting this wrong. If we experience trauma, if we are hit, it will cause us to go in cardiac arrest. Do you know how rare and difficult that is to happen? And so right when Hamlin's heart hit that little millisecond of a T and he got a regular tackle, nothing extraordinary, nothing hard, just a regular tackle, it caused him to go into cardiac arrest. But listen to what this writer says. She says, regardless of intellect, business success, social status, or other worldly achievements, when life hits us in the chest, it brings us to our knees. In today's divided and hostile world, the humility and poured out love in that moment was in itself a miracle. When the guys huddled to pray, nobody asked if every religion was represented or who they supported in the last election. Nobody mentioned government spending or justice reform. Not for one minute did anyone worry about the racial mix within the huddle? There's nothing wrong with having issues and disagreements with others, but that's just not important in a moment like that. Everything falls away when we're desperate for God. She was amazed at the huddle in a football game when all the players came together to pray pray. No one cared. Nothing mattered. Nothing mattered except calling on God. And we have to huddle. That's us praying. That's us calling on God. And then he told us what to do. He says, go and make disciples. When you live a surrendered life, that's what's most important, to go and make sure that everyone knows about Jesus Christ. And we spend so much time in self-pity. We spend so much time. What about my finances? Where's my next this going to come from? Oh, my goodness, this. And listen, God's like, I have some people out there that don't know who I am. I will take care of you. Did, did you not notice that the sparrow is fine? Did you not notice that I closed the fields with lilies? Did you not know that if my eye is on those things, I'm watching you. I got you. I need you to go. Run the play. Get out of the huddle. Stop writing all the Bible studies and all the prayers. That's good. It's important. It's needed. Do the huddle. But then you've got to run the play. And we're so consumed with self-help. Look at your vision board. I will show you. Look at your vision board or look at what you uh, have asked God for. Does it all involve you? Or have you planned to go and disciple someone, to go and to tell someone about Jesus Christ and bring them into the ministry and teach them scripture? And if it's no, I need a new house, I need a new car, I need a new relationship, I need a new job, I need, I hope God brings me out of this. I hope God, no, where is it? God, bring, take me, because it says go and tell. It doesn't say come and hear or come and see. It says go and tell. God, lead me to this year I want to disciple 10 people. Is that on your vision board? Because that's the play he called. <laughs> we all out here running our own plays, but he called the play. 
He huddled 11 players together because remember, Judas Iscariot had betrayed him. So here we are in Galilee and Jesus huddled 11 players. 11 disciples remained and he said, hey, when I break, I'll be with you always. But when we break, here's the play we're going to run. I want you to go and I want you to tell who all nations. The beautiful thing is he said, teach them and baptize them. Listen, bat, look at how he's going to baptize them. In the name, not the names with an S, in the name of the Father <laughs> and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He's distinguishing that we are three and yet we are still one because name remains singular. Come on, y'all. He's called a play. He's huddled us together. He huddled those disciples in Galilee. And we are disciples. He's telling us, those are your instructions this year. Change your mindset. Don't worry about where you're going to eat next. He said, I care for you. Why don't you spend this year surrendering? Just live a surrendered life where it's not about you. It's about somebody else finding Jesus Christ. It's not about somebody else being fed. You can feed them. It's not about clothing somebody who hasn't been clothed. We do that. But this is about God. Ask God for a number. God, what number of people do you want me to disciple this year? Give me that number, God, and show me where they are. Lead me to them so that I can witness. If my witness is just I'm living a holy life, if my witness is they like, you ain't cussed in a long time, that's because Jesus saved my life. He changed my name. He changed how I was doing business in my life. And I'm a new creature because of Jesus. Let me tell you what he did for me. That's a witness. And then you teach them how to teach somebody else how to become a disciple. Go. You just go and tell. We invite people to church. We say come in here. <laughs> come and see. And he says, no, no, the instructions were... To go and tell. We add nothing to the kingdom when we move from church to church. Um, I think you should move from a church when the Spirit of God is not present. I think you should leave a church when Jesus has left the church. I think you should when you realize that it's not a, a place of worship anymore. So I'm not telling you not to. But what I'm saying is some people just get mad. Jesus is still there. They're just mad. Um, and when they get mad, they leave. But when you leave, if you're saved, you didn't add to the kingdom just by switching churches. The kingdom is added to when someone comes out of this world and into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and they decide to serve him. If you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, today's a great day to do that. All you have to do is admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. Um, and that you believe that Jesus came, he died on the cross, that his blood covers your sin, that, that that's what makes you righteous and not your works. Um, and that he died, he was buried, and that he rose from the dead, and that he has gone to prepare a place for us, and he's coming back for us one day. And if you believe that, you're absolutely saved. Uh, you can go online to Know Walls Now What? Scroll down to Best Decision Ever Made, and there is a link there to help you uh, in your new walk, in your new journey with Jesus Christ. And you also can reach out to us here at knowwallsnowwhat at gmail.com, and we will be happy to pray with you, pray for you, or to answer any questions that you might have about salvation or about the Word of God. Um, if our hearts and minds are clear, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the huddle, God, for allowing us just to get into the circle with you and the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, God, to teach us all things so that we can go and make disciples. God, we just thank you for that opportunity. I ask right now that you would heal those who um, have experienced loss, God. I ask that you would heal those um, who need a physical healing, God. And I ask that you would make whole people who are searching for you, God. I ask that you would just from the inside out that you would make them whole. I thank you in advance for every answer prayer. In your precious son Jesus name, amen. Amen. The huddle. It's okay to huddle. You should pray. You should go to Bible study. You got to do your devotions. You got to come in communion with other people but then run the play. Nobody comes to watch the huddle. <laughs> we come to watch the actual game. Alright, I love you all so much and I can't wait to see you next week. Bye-bye.